Are we live? We're live. All right. Good, good. We will hang out. Some people will show up. Then we'll do a little singing class. Ain't nobody yet. <laughs> Could you like a little puppet show with my little elephants? <laughs> good, good. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, guys. We, uh, we've got our, uh, we changed our internet here and we have a wired mic today again. I watched the video from yesterday and it turned out pretty okay. So, um, if you notice anything let me know but I think that it's better now which is great so um, good morning thanks for coming back um, it's so together Tuesday I'm Teresa Coates I'm the national educator for Shannon fabrics and this week we are making Ellie elephant so this is um, a little pattern that we have from uh, funky friends factory is the name of the pattern company and we are making this guy today so if you were here yesterday I would love a little like like button see how many people are showing up again it's great I really like having you back um, day after day it's really fun and um, happy to have you here so thanks for joining us one more time today we're gonna work through um, our version of the elephant which is still um, as I like to call it in roadkill mode so it's still pretty um, smashed up and not really looking like an elephant but we've gotten this part done these are a couple of versions that I did before so this is the one that I showed you um, before we actually started the class um, this is one that I did out of Lux Cuddle Sorbet which people love and is hard to find but keep looking um, we have some stores that have um, some of the patterns and eyes and stuff and I'll get you that information but this is one that I want to show you that I made out of cuddle three so cuddle three is what we like to call the flat cuddle or just regular cuddle it's a three millimeter nap and that's why we call it cuddle three so you can see the difference in the fabrics just themselves in that the Lux cuddles um, all of those this is like the hide this is sorbet these are all longer naps so they have a very long nap on this edge here um, the Cuddle 3 does not. It has a three millimeter nap, so the nap is much shorter on it, which means it's um, easier to work with in a lot of ways because it doesn't, um, it's not so thick. So it gets you through your machine a lot better and a lot easier if your machine is struggling at all. But I wanted to show you the difference in how they work. So I really like making things, especially stuffed animals, I like making them out of Cuddle, um, the Lux Cuddle, I mean well cuddle of all sorts but Lux cuddle especially because it's so good at hiding all of your seams and if it's not straight or it hides where the seam is so you can see the difference just by looking at these two um, how the seams show on this one and how they don't on this one um, especially like this is a great example of this like down the arm and this leg and that little seam down here okay which on this guy is much harder to see and is not as noticeable, especially like this seam down here. I really don't see it on this guy, it's, ver it's very visible. Um, the other thing about working with the Cuddle 3 is that all of your seam lines are gonna show more. So this one I worked hard to get these circles down here to work um, on the pads of his feet, which worked out pretty well. Uh, but on the Lux Cuddle one, it doesn't have to be nearly as perfect and it'll totally just hide because of all the fluff. So I just wanted to show you the difference. Um, it really is just a matter of picking and choosing which you prefer. There is no right or wrong. So you can absolutely use Lux Cuddle or you can use the Cuddle 3. I wanted to show you the difference between them so you could choose for yourself. Um, but if you feel like your machine would struggle a little bit with the Lux Cuddle, you can totally start here. And um, this one it works super easy to work with, okay? Oh, I'm caught on a corner here with my mic. Okay, so this is what we're doing today. I'm going to refresh where we were. So basically we just stopped and I left my table exactly where we were yesterday, okay? So we had to finish the body, okay? So the outside of the body, we did the, the head, the tusks, the ears, and this outside of the body, and then we set this aside. And now we're working on the middle part, which is its chest and legs. 
okay so yesterday we put its tummy and chest together okay these two funky pieces this is where I was talking about yesterday about how much I love her patterns I would never think to come up with a pattern piece that looks like this <laughs> that would work but it totally does so we sewed these guys together and sewed the little tusks on and we sewed our legs together okay so these were our back legs piece one and two that we sewed together so now we have our legs front legs and back legs all right so I'm gonna turn this over so you can see the dots so we talked yesterday about making sure that you transfer all of those markings that are on the pattern onto your fabric okay and the reason is because we want to match these things up so I can see these two dots and these two dots are going to go together and I know that this pattern piece goes on here because these two dots go this direction and these two go this direction so sometimes we've had it I'm going to show you how people mess it up is that they will put the two dots together here because there's two dots and two dots but these dots are going the wrong direction okay so that's how to remember because I've seen many classes where they're trying to get this whole thing to fit in and that doesn't work it goes over here and that whole thing is going to fit into this curve okay so those two are going to go there these two dots are going to go over here okay and this is why it's important to get those little markings on here because now we know these dots match these dots match we know exactly where our legs go I saw that somebody had posted yesterday that they had managed to get the legs on backwards once um, and that happens so this is how you make sure that it doesn't happen um, is make sure you transfer those marks okay so we're gonna be sewing some fairly straight lines here to some very curved lines um, so this is where we're, our pinning is going to change just slightly and then when we do the pads it'll change again even more intently so let's start with the back legs because they're larger okay so this is a larger area for us to, for us to ease this in and make sure that it works and I'm just gonna pin that and then we'll sew them <clears throat> excuse me we'll just do them one at a time okay so I'm gonna take this right sides together I'm gonna make sure that my dots are on the same side and I'm just gonna start pinning. okay so I'm gonna do that thing where I pin it on one end and I'm gonna pin it on the other Oh, I forgot to tell everybody. I just get so used to this. Make sure that you leave your um, state, your name, your city and state. Okay, tell us where you're from. And um, I've noticed a few names on here who've been in my classes. So if you were in my classes, yeah, tell me. Because I'd like to say a little special hi. It's really fun to see people again. I was like, oh, I remember you from such and such a place. Okay, so I'm going to put these about an inch, a little more apart, inch and a quarter maybe. Okay, I'm going to put these pins apart just a little bit. And I'm going to try to ease this. So you can see there's like a big bump here. But if I pull this, I can make it go flat. Okay, so that's what I want to happen, is I want those to go flat. So I'm going to pin it in between there. Okay, so now I've got it so that it goes pretty flat. What I'm going to do to make it even flatter is I'm going to pin from the other side. Okay, what happens is if we pin all along the same side, we, we do this thing when we pin is that it short, sort of shoves the fabric, okay, either on one side or the other. What I found is this, um, if we pin from one side and then the other side, it gets it to lay flatter and doesn't shove the seam allowances um, in the wrong places. So it gets them to go back and forth, which makes it much more consistent. So you can see now, despite the fact that we were sewing this really curvy thing we've now got it basically to lay completely flat okay so this will make it a lot easier to sew so I'm gonna sew this one and then we'll pin the next one and then we'll do the next and next and next okay so come on around and I'll get the machine set up so I've got my machine um, again it's set at a straight stitch I have it at a 2.5 stitch length because um, we're just doing a um, a shorter stitch length because we want it to hold better so normally in when we're sewing with cuddle we'll have a three and a half stitch length um, this one it's two and a half is all I'm doing so it's just a similar um, are we stuck over here yep. um, <laughs> the wire is better because the sound is better but also it creates this little thing in the studio so thanks my partner is here doing the filming and um, I'm really yeah incredibly grateful for that because couldn't do it without him um, so we're gonna just get to sew with this I've got a polyester thread I've got the 9014 stretch needle and I'm on a straight stitch right now okay so I'm sewing with a baby lock crescendo is what I have and so I have a digital dual feed <clears throat> excuse me and so um, you'll probably have if you have a baby lock or a brother machine you have you have this part of it um, the digital dual feed most of the time you're just gonna have a walking foot and that's what you'll want to use for this okay so we're gonna use a quarter inch um, seam allowance so it's a little bit smaller seam allowance than we would normally do as well 
And on my machine, this line is my quarter inch. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my eyeball on that. I'm gonna start in just a little bit. We talked about it yesterday on these edges. If you have some leaders and enders, you can totally use those there. To make sure that your fabric does not get sucked down into your machine because it will try to on certain points, okay? So I'm just gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna get a drink in half a second, but I'm gonna um, just pull my needles out as I go, or my pins, okay? And so very carefully. If I keep my pins in for as long as possible, it'll help. Okay, I'm just gonna come right along here, and then I'm gonna backstitch. See, not terrible at all. Okay, cut my thread, come on over here. All right, so now we've got it We've got it attached there. Like I talked about yesterday, we wanna make sure that our seam allowance is catching on both sides, that we catch all the places we're supposed to. Okay, that one worked out pretty darn good. So we're gonna do it one more time. And I'm gonna grab my pins from over here, use my little magnetic guy. Reach over. Hold on. I'm gonna grab my drink. <clears throat> All that talking. Okay. So now I've got the other side. So this is my one leg, my one left leg, <laughs> and this is my other. Okay. So the back leg. So left side. Now right side. I'm gonna make sure that again my dots are matching. Okay. Bring those together. Okay, and I'm paying attention to the raw edge, which because I have the Sharpie marks still on there are easier to see, which makes it sort of like a, it's a nice side effect from using the Sharpie. So I wanna get those lined up, okay? And I'm gonna do one end and then I'll do the other end and then in between, all right? This is always the easiest way to do it because Minky likes to stretch um, and so what we want to do is we want to feed it slowly in between to make sure that we don't actually stretch it as we're pinning because it'd be really easy to pin this down and then have a whole bunch come off the end. That's not what we're trying to do. You can see that I can pull it and make it fit in there just fine. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to pin in here a couple of times and then go back and pin again. If you can't tell, pinning is really the key to making this stuff work. People always ask me, like, what's the secret to working with Minky? And it really is just pinning a lot. Pin as much as you think you need to pin and then pin twice that much. It's generally my rule. If you're working with cotton, you won't have to pin quite as much, but honestly, because we're dealing with these curves, you're gonna have to pin a lot too with that, okay? All right, so now I've gotten it done. Second time, okay? So all the way across, I'm gonna put this side in on the bottom so it'll make sure and feed all of that through as I go, and we'll be good as gold. Okay, so I'm gonna put that guy down. I'm gonna put it in just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, go forward. <clears throat> Goodness, all right. And then I'm just gonna sew until I get pretty close to that pin and then you can see I'll just take it out. So make sure that you're the one, like you are controlling your foot pedal, so make sure that you stop beforehand. I say this, I did clear up my needle that I accidentally sewed over. So make sure that you're slowing down as you approach those pins and try really hard not to sew over them. I've had some, some horror stories, they're like rotary cutters. They're definitely horror stories out there. Okay, so I can see that this is getting bunched up back here. I can feel it. And so all I have to do is lift this up and drop it out, okay? And now it's nice and flat back there and will sew really easily. So make sure you don't let it bunch up too hard because um, at some point, if it keeps bunching up like that, it'll, it'll make it so your stitches don't can't go. And so you'll get teeny tiny little stitches, okay? Grab my pins again. All right, so now I've got both of the back legs on. I'm gonna do a little double check, make sure we got everything. Okay, looks great. Okay, totally worked. You can see from this side, it gathered it just a tiniest little bit here, and you can't see anything from this side, okay? So if this were in a cotton, we might have to redo this so we could get that to, to feed in more evenly, but with the cuddle, it totally works, all right? 
we have any questions in there? We're good. We're great. Okay, everybody's happy, healthy, sewing with us. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. Okay, so here I've got the other one. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but this one is a teeny tiny. I mean, you can see this is a little bitty curve. It's a really tight curve. So we're just gonna do the same thing and get it to fit in there, um, but it does take a little bit more um, finagling, I guess, is a nice word for it. Okay, so I get that. Pin the ends together. Then I pin this one together. Okay, and like I said, I'm worrying more about the edge and not the nap. So if you can kind of shove it out of the way, it's helpful. And like I said, that black line in there is actually really helpful to be able to see it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here where I'm just gonna pin and then pin in between. This one is gonna have even more pins then it seems like it should, but it's really because this is a tiny little curve and I wanna make sure I get it all right. So I'm gonna stick some in from the other side as well. Okay, what happens is this keeps it flatter. You can see that it wants to kind of curl this way, and if I pin it in this way, it'll curl back the other direction. Okay, it's kind of a weird little trick. Pauline from Funky Friends taught me that one, and it was, it's definitely been a, a game changer for me. Okay, so this is my teeny tiny little curve. Okay, and I've got the flat side on there. So now we're gonna go over and we'll sew that one. All right, so I always recommend that you start with the bigger ones. We'll do the same thing when we do the pads of his feet, because um, if you can get it down for the bigger one, it'll be a lot easier for the smaller one. Okay, so I'm gonna push this tusk out of the way because I wanna make sure that I don't actually nab it when I'm sewing. And I'm gonna get this under there again. Okay, I'm gonna Take that pin out, because I think it's pretty darn close. Backstitch a little. Okay, and keep it going. So as I'm coming through here, I wanna try to get this nice and flat. And get those pins out before I come near them. Okay, and I can feel this back here, there's a whole lot of stuff happening. So I can feel it because this is very curved underneath. So I'm just gonna try to move it as I go so I don't get any little puckers along that. So basically it's bunched up this direction as I sew and then I'm gonna move it this way as I sew, okay? And I can kind of feel how much is, is there. So I've had to go back and fix that a couple of times where I've actually caught the under fabric. So we'll make sure that we didn't, but I will tell you it's a place that sometimes happens. Okay, so this one worked out okay. We caught it all. I've got a teeny tiny little seam right there. But like I said, at least if it's, if it's at least an eighth of an inch, you're okay. It's not gonna, um, it's not gonna unravel, okay? So you're, you're gonna be fine. That one will work. And let's pin the next leg on. Okay, so here's our last one. We're gonna do the exact same thing. And it's kind of fun how it actually just goes back to that shape. So it'll totally do the curve, even though we've sewn basically a straight onto a curve, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna match these guys up. I'm gonna keep that tusk out of the way because I don't wanna sew him. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Okay, so in the end, we have a whole bunch of little seams right over here, and we'll talk about that when we get to the next part, because um, that gets a little bit, gets a little funky. A little funky, like funky friends. Okay. And pin in between, when you can see, it just don't want, doesn't want to necessarily lay flat, but we're gonna make it. And I'm gonna go back, pin from the other side. Okay, and so some of these I get the pin in too far and I'm gonna take it back out because I don't want it in that far. One, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't, my seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, it needs to be holding that in. Um, the other is it just makes it harder to pull it out. So if I have them hanging out the edge a lot more, it's easier just to grab them and go. All right, so you can see how nice and flat that is. Let's sew this one. Okay, I'm gonna get all of that out of my way. Shove it under there. Okay. 
and I like to take a couple of stitches forward and then go backward. That seems to help me. So I can, you can sort of see, so if we back up just a little, you can see how much is like sort of shoved this direction under here. You see this, so this will sew flat back here because this is all shoved this way. But what happens is as we come around, if this stays shoved up here, we're gonna get this sort of thing happening in the back. And we don't want that to happen. We want this to be flat. So as we're sewing, that's what I'm talking about is that this needs to be shoved back out of the way. So as we're going, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it in the front and then I'm gonna start to shove it to the back, okay? So then I just bring it back around. And that way we don't catch that in the front, but that's how that happens is because you have a lot more um, fabric on the other side of it, okay? All right, okay. So now we'll check that seam. Make sure that it's right. I'm gonna go back over this one just one more time from this side because I can see this got a little small right there. It's a little smaller than I want it to be. And I don't wanna to have to go back in and fix that leg later. So I'm gonna just double, double stitch it so that I don't have to, just to reassure myself, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start where I was before, just do a little lock stitch. And I'm just gonna come this way just the tiniest little bit. Okay, so it's just a teeny tiny little seam, the change that I'm making, but it also adds that other layer of stitching. So it makes it stronger as well as just a little bit bigger. Okay, all right. All right, so that's better. I feel better about that. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna come out on me later because now it's double stitched and it's a little bit wider, okay? And that works out really well. I can give it a little tug, make sure it's not going anywhere. Give all my legs a little pull. They're doing great, okay? So now, now is where it looks really funky, okay? So we've got this just a bizarre little shape Okay, <laughs> that it really makes you go, huh, I don't, I don't get it. Um, this is where confusion sets in. So I'm gonna show you how she explains it on the pattern so that when you do this again, um, or when you use her other patterns that you'll be able to tell uh, how to use them, okay? So on here, she shows you, this is your, this is your belly, okay? So you can see this is the same shape as this, basically, all right? So you can see here are your tusks, your legs out to each side, your tummy and chest sewn together, all right? This piece here is this one here, all right? That's this shape, all right? Does that make sense? Um, so we've got those two shapes and now we need to sew them together. So this is where it gets really funky and where I have so much respect for her pattern drafting um, because it's just it just works. So on here, step one is in the red, okay? And I really recommend that you follow her suggestions on the steps to do them in, to sew this and then this and then this. And she'll do that in each pattern. She'll tell you which area to sew first. And it really does make a difference. She's um, yeah, believe her when she tells you to do it that way. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this, step one is the red, okay? So we're gonna sew the back of the leg and around its rear and back up the other leg. We're gonna do the same thing here, okay? So I sew it so that I go all the way around. You can do it one way and then come back up the other way. I managed to do it the whole way and it works out just fine, okay? So we're gonna sew that together first. So that's where looking at her paper, figuring out which, pat which way you sew it first is really helpful. So I'm gonna lay this down. I've got my F marked here. Okay, that's its, basically its tail, its, its rump. So that's this spot right here. Okay, so this is F, and this is where the F is on those two bottom pieces. All right, so that would be, I'm gonna find it here. Here we go. So here's our F. Here's our F on here, okay? We need to make those match. So F becomes the seam allowance, or the seam is really what that is. So we're gonna match those up first, okay? And I'm gonna get my little line to come up to my seam allowance, or my seam line, and I'm gonna pin it. Okay, and now I'm gonna come all the way to the end to where its feet are her feet will be, and I'm gonna pin it there, okay? 
So now I've got the ends pinned together and I've got the center pinned together. I'm gonna to pin this one together and then we'll pin everything in between, okay? So same way we do with all of the cuddle stuff is we're just gonna we do the, the center of the ends and then in between, all right? And that way we make sure that these two lengths, which don't really seem like they might work together, will totally work, all right? I'm gonna put some pins over here so I can grab them easily. All right, this is where it gets a little bit funky because the pinning these, so if you're, if you're a quilter, you, you understand, like we're used to working with, you know, flat, stable fabrics. This is not it, there's all sorts of curves and bumps and fluff. So it's a little bit different. So I like to pin a couple inches apart and then, so then I can see like, okay, I'm gonna start to repin this just a little bit because I want that the amount of fluff that's back there, the amount of extra that's on the back to sort of even out, okay? So I can see that's a little bit more even. So that's why I'll do them further apart and then I come back in because then I can really nail it down. Okay. I'm gonna start to add some in that are backwards from the other side. Okay, do the same thing over here so I'm gonna pin from this side and then that side and then this side and it doesn't have to be every other okay so like these two are gonna be next to each other and that's fine but every few of them we're gonna do the other side so it sort of flattens it back out again all right I have a question um, mm -hmm. uh, how does minky differ from faux fur oh uh, well minky um, the, especially like the lux cuddle is different from faux fur faux fur is a longer nap it's also a different construction so um, minky cuddle faux, or the lux cuddle all of this stuff that's the longer nap here um, it's often called faux fur and it's not at this actually 100 percent polyester faux fur generally has acrylic in it and so it's dry clean only this is machine washable so it's um, much easier to deal with sewing with i don't need to cut out so faux fur when i've worked with it i always cut out the seam allowances because it's so thick the backing is much heavier this is a much lighter knit backing um, it's just easier to work with. I don't, especially with the seam allowances, because for me that's the thing with the faux fur is that you really have to take it out of the seam allowances because they get so bulky. Um, the Lux Cuddle does not do that at all. And like I said, the other part is that it's machine washable. It's a different kind of fabric. So it's just a little bit easier to deal with in, um, in the big picture. Also much easier to find. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Lori. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, you'll see that sometimes in stores they will call this faux fur, and it is not faux fur. We make faux fur. Um, we sell a lot of it to manufacturers. We do sell some in shops. And I've worked with it a few times, and it's great stuff, but it is different. It's, like I said, it's dry clean only because it's a different kind of substrate. So, um, so one thing that's really nice about the Lux Cuddle is you can sort of get a faux fur look with some of this stuff while it's keeping it machine washable and easy to... Um, easy to care for and in my opinion much easier to sew with okay yeah that was a good question any others i'm really happy to answer that stuff um, anything about working with cuddle or with these patterns are great okay and you can see it's a ton of pins but it makes all the difference. Okay, so now this is where like it starts looking weird. All right, and so you can see this is its this is its end here. Okay, this shape right here, that's what we're sewing. All right, so we're gonna sew up and around and back down to the other side. So it's really important as you're sewing not to try to get this to go out straight because it's not going to. So we're gonna aim toward this side. Then we'll do a lot of reshifting because you can see there's a whole lot more fabric on this side than there is on that one. So as we're sewing, we're gonna make sure that this is staying out of our way. So we're gonna sew down here, and then I will do a big shift and we'll bring a whole bunch of this over here and then sew down the other side, okay? So I think that that's um, an important thing to remember because otherwise it's easy to get, get it all messed up. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get this in here, get my ends to match. 
and pin that just slightly. I'm going to get this under my foot at the quarter inch. Okay. I'm going to back stitch just a few. And then I'm going to go forward. And remember, if you're having trouble with it going forward, one is that I can use these pins to sort of push forward, but I can also use my stiletto to get in there and push it. Okay. So I'm going to get this nice and straight. As this comes in, I want it to be as flat as possible. I'm going to try to open my seams when I go over them. If it ends up that it isn't, it's fine. It just creates a little bit less bulk if I can get it to open up. So one of the perks about pinning this much is that it's going to stay flat in between, and I'm not going to have to try to shove it down. Um, now I'm going to move. Hold on, because I can see this is starting to bulk up here. So I'm going to shift. So you can see, like, I had it flat here. And there, pull that out. So it's flat in here from where I sewed it, and now it's big and bulky, and I can see there's more fabric down here than I need. So I'm just going to kind of pull that as I'm going and aim toward this corner. And then we'll do a major reshift at the corner. Okay, and I can kind of feel it under here, how much is bulked up. So if so, I can feel it over here with my fingers. So definitely try to, yeah, just keep your hands on it. So you can see I have a lot here. This isn't gonna come straight out of my machine, obviously, because it's this curved thing. But what I wanna do is try to get up to the F which is that little line, and that's where I'm going to shift things around a lot. Okay. Okay, I'm going to come up here. Get this up here. Okay, so now at this point, I'm at the halfway point. All right, and you can see I've got a whole lot just wadded up under here that I can't obviously just sew this down. Oops. Um, so what I need to do is I need to lift my foot and then I'm going to take and shove all this stuff toward the back. Okay, so now the bulk of my stuff is going that way and now you can see under here it's almost flat. Okay, so that's, that's what I did there is I just want to shift things around a little bit so that it's keeping it as flat as possible under there. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little finicky moving things around finessing um, the fabric under there to make sure that it's where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm keeping this nice and flat. So the bulk of my fabric is all back here now, and I'm just going to work toward the other foot. Okay, so this I can see this is starting to get like it's twisted down here. That means there's there's some fabric things happening under there. So I just want to shift it up and head it head down toward the foot. So you just want to make sure that where you are going right away that that's nice and flat. If it's further down, you can't get to it yet, it's okay. So you can see back here, it's starting to bulk up. Okay, I'm just gonna lift my foot and pull it out. All right, so that can happen underneath your walking foot or your digital dual feed. Make sure that you're not letting that bulk up too much underneath the foot because it'll really affect the way that it's stitching, okay? I think I talked about it yesterday at the beginning. It's the one thing about that, the digital dual feed. I really love it, but when I have this much stuff, sometimes it can get a little bit in the way. So I just have to work with it. Okay, I'm gonna grab my pins. All right, so now we've got the booty on there. All right, so now I'm gonna check my seams. Same thing, you're gonna see, oh, so there's a little part. So we're gonna totally do this the whole way that I'm gonna find little bits and I'm gonna be like, nope, I'm gonna re-sew that because um, things move on me. Okay, here's another one where this one is just barely caught the fibers, do you see that? This is one that would be really easy to miss and then I would go back and find it later after I was trying to stuff it and that's frustrating. So I just check it out. Okay, we're gonna go sew that. And so this is where um, I will do it from the other side. So I'm gonna come back over here, I'll start stitching and bring it across. Okay, so let's do that and I'll fix those two spots. Okay, it seems a little bit like I haven't figured out a way to make it catch every single time. So I just go back and fix it and it's easier for me if I do it just a little bit at a time. Okay. You leave the needle down when you're shifting? I do indeed, because I don't want the rest of it to move. Okay, so I'm just gonna stitch right over where I stitched before. So yeah, I keep my needle down position in all the time. So this part, I have all the bulk on top, so I'm gonna need to just move it around as I'm going. 
Okay, I'm going to make sure and catch that edge. So we've now expanded the seam allowance on the other side, and that's okay. All right, because we're working with Lux Cuddle, that actually works just fine. So I'm going to catch that. Come over here. The other thing that you can do if you really want to make sure and catch it good is to go back over it with a zigzag too. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, it was down there. Okay. In the original materials list, there was a uh, fabric glue. Is that something that you use? I in construction? do not use fabric glue. No. Was that in her in her pattern? I think so. Huh. No, I've never used fabric glue. Um, it might help for some of the places if you're working with cotton, but I just pin like crazy. Okay, so I'm going to catch this little area too because it's just really close. And I want to make sure that it doesn't, doesn't go anywhere afterward. Okay. Okay, I'll make sure those are caught. Make sure that's caught. Yep, you can see where I caught it right up here, just a little bit over there. All right, and that should be totally fine. Okay. All right. So you'll see in mine, I have little tags that I put in them. Um, and so I usually do that when I'm making them for people, so it has my little my little brand thing there. So if you have little tags, or like I have some that say, P.S. I love you, you could put those in these seams here, and that's a good place to do it. Okay, all right, so now I've got the booty on, okay? So that's that part. So now we're gonna lay this out. This is where it gets really like, it's just a thing of fabric that sort of loses any shape of being an elephant, okay? Like this is totally roadkill mode, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the leg and I'm gonna shut the leg first. Okay, so this is the back leg. I'm gonna pin that here because I know that those two go together. All right, then I'm just gonna work my way up and figure out where this goes. So this goes about here. I'll figure out the middle in a second. And then over here to the end of this leg. All right, if you don't do it that way, it's a little bit easier to get confused as to what goes where. So I've just found that I have to sort of work up the leg and figure out where it's at, okay? So now I have this, we still have this middle section that just looks really bizarre. Um, and we're just gonna work it through, okay? So you can see that where I shove this is not the center. I just wanted to hold it basically in place. So I'm gonna unpin that, okay? And I can sort of get this to work. So what I have found is that this seam here fits between these seams, okay? So this is the, this is the belly. Here's the chest, the tummy, this is where those legs come together, okay? So there's a, there's a little spot right here. It's between D and, I don't know what letter that is. The dots, maybe that's the dots, yeah. So D and the dots is where that is. That's where this seam is gonna go in between, okay? It is not precise at this point. You are just not trying to match up seams. So that's what that's what's important to remember is that you are not trying to match those seams up to anything at this point. All right, they are just gonna be there and they go in between each other and that will help it lay nice and flat. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here where I pin big and then I'm gonna go back in and pin in between. Okay, and I'm gonna try to keep there's a seam back there. I'm going to try to keep that flat. Okay, it's okay if it doesn't. I'm going to try to keep these curves in there. Can you talk at all about the difference between a walking foot and digital dual feed? Oh, okay. So um, I don't think I have a walking foot here at all, unfortunately. But a walking foot is, um, it'll generally have like a back part of it that's white and then it will have the foot comes down and the foot actually lifts up and comes like this as you're going so it has like a walking or it has feed dogs basically on the bottom of the foot okay and then as the foot goes it kind of picks up and moves as you're going the digital dual feed if you look at this really closely it actually has like a little a belt in here you see the little black belt that's what grabs the fabric underneath and pulls the fabric through 
okay so this this little dig right there that little belt comes underneath here and that's what pulls the fabric through rather than feed dogs grabbing it okay so if you have a walking foot it looks totally different it has like like i said like little feed dogs at the bottom so i uh i don't have my other machines here with me right now because you know crisis pandemic <laughs> so i don't have them here to show you but you've probably seen a walking foot before um some of them are very specific for the machine. So like Bernina makes one especially for their machine because the way that their feet go on, the way their feet attach, you have to have the special um, Bernina ones. Um, there are others that use sort of generic ones. I have a, I actually have one for my featherweight that works. It was just a generic one that I, that I bought and it totally works on my featherweight. I've actually sewn cuddle on my featherweight and it's fine too. I've not sewn Lux cuddle on it, but regular cuddle you totally can. Okay, so if you've got one of those. Um, okay, so now I've got all of this pinned. So I'm gonna come sew this whole thing. This is where we might do some re-sewing a few times, guys, because it can get, it can get weird. All right, so I'm gonna stick this in there, get it underneath the foot, drop my needle down, okay? So now I'm in there just a little bit. We talked a little bit about it yesterday that if you got, you know, if you're a quilter and you got leaders and enders, this is a place that you can use them to make it a little bit easier. Okay, but this little seam allowance, so you can see like this quarter seam allowance and how it sometimes doesn't quite work to stay a quarter. Um, this is why when we tell you to do like the kits and our other projects, that we're always using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, and it's so that you have a little bit more, um, I just like to call it wiggle room, so that you can not get it perfect and it'll be okay okay so i can feel there's a whole lot of bulk happening under here and so you can see me sort of fidgeting as i'm trying to trying to figure out where it's at and what i'm sewing over we'll figure it out when i'm done okay just try to make sure that i'm not getting any puckers under there so i'm just trying to make sure it's straight this little this little curve part is definitely um, not hard it just you know it can it can get messed up and then I just have to go over and fix it but because of the way the cuddle works please do not take any of your stitches out if your seam is too small just go back over your seam okay don't worry about taking stitches out if you have to take stitches out of this I have a few different techniques for doing it but usually it just involves a blade and cutting the thread all right so let's go back over here Look at that, I caught it all this time, ta-da! Okay, so this is a bit bigger seam allowance here than it is on this side, like this side was a quarter, it's really nice and lovely. This one is a little bit more, and that's gonna be okay. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. And this really, it can get confusing, so just take your time with this because it starts, like I said, it just starts to lose its it's feeling of what anything is all right so we're going to go back i can find the the f part that was the rear remember that this is the bottom of the leg okay so i'm gonna go back over match up the bottom of the leg okay this is definitely a part that i have seen people sew together in the funniest ways um, <laughs> if i don't pay attention to students in class they can make their own choices which are sometimes pretty fun um, never successful but they can be pretty fun to watch okay so now I've got my end and my end and so then I'm gonna stick in between I figured out that this seam okay this seam here needs to go in between those seams so I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna pin that okay these pins are the like the white yellow um, mint green ones here's one Okay, these are all, um, these are a different kind of pin than these. So these are all clover pins. Uh, the ones that have the red on one side and like peach on the other are a little bit lighter weight. So these bend more than these do, these don't bend. Okay, so if you're looking for stronger pins, these come in the box, the clover box. Um, and I think there's, 
I'm going to try to, like, there's either 50 or 100 pins in it. It's a bunch. And it's, it's kind of an investment. They're usually about $12 for that box. But they're really good pins. And I like them for places like this where I'm really trying to hold stuff together in just a really super funky way. Um, that I want those pins to not budge on me. And so they're a little bit harder to shove through because they're thicker and all of that good stuff. But they do hold really well. They're my, they're my favorites. Um, so the, and these pink, and, or the red and peach, I guess that's what that color is. Um, those ones come on a card, okay? And those I think you get like 20 on a card or something. So it's a cheaper version of it, um, as in lower cost, but um, you get less of them too. So there's your, your pin lesson for the day. Okay, this is one that comes in that box too. So the thing I like about clover pins is you can see how far up in here the head comes, or the pin comes into the head, okay? It makes a big, big difference. So make sure that you're looking at that when you're buying pins. It makes a difference in why the pin heads fall off. So if you've had that issue before. And I found that the pins make a big difference on here because honestly, when I'm doing that and I'm having to pull out all those pins, I want the heads to stay on them as I'm pulling them out. So quality pins will make a big difference. Okay. Go back in here pin some from the other side, keep it as flat as we can. All right, okay, so now I've got it pinned the whole way again. Some sort of code in there it looks like. Um, so we're gonna sew along this whole thing one more time. This, just to reiterate, is actually this seam here. So this seam that's coming in here along its leg, so this is the back of the leg, remember where we put those two together, and then up and around that side seam and down the front leg. That's what we're sewing right now, okay? All right. Grab those and do this again. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here, get that underneath my foot. stitch a little and get it going forward okay and because this is um because it's cuddle it's a little bit heavier and so it kind of wants to pull forward just a little bit so I'm just making sure that it's it's up as much as possible but not shoving it into my machine because I want to make sure that it's coming in as flat as I can okay so this one, I'm gonna grab my little stiletto because I can, I can see there's just a lot happening right here. And I wanna be able to kind of shove it and guide it a little bit more. I can see my seam or my edge was right here, but I sort of lose it in here, okay? So I'm gonna try to make sure that I'm pushing it over enough that I can catch it. And if I use my stiletto, I have a little bit more uh, control over where it's going. All right, so sometimes when we're working with the cuddle, we do what I affectionately call blind sewing. And it means I'm just trying to like aim for something. And that's what I was doing there. It's just aiming for the edge. And we'll see when we're done how close it is. Okay, get that open. Keep it nice and flat. And then I'm gonna backstitch. So on this one, I'm backstitching almost all of my seams. I backstitch them because this needs to be, um, it needs to be strong. So when we're doing cuddle quilts, I often don't backstitch because we're just gonna take it and sew over the top, so it's fine. Um, but on this one, I'm making sure that I'm actually backstitching everything. Okay, so I'm just checking my seams. Looks like I caught it in there. I'm actually gonna check it and give it a little tug. Okay, and I can't see it popping at all. Um, so that's the thing is if you give it a tug and it, if it's not close enough, you'll t start to see it spread. And I can't see that happening, so I'm just gonna leave it be. Okay, so now, now we get to see scene three, okay? So I'm gonna show you on the paper again, all right? So this is the one that we did across the back side and down the other leg. These are the two that we just did, is these guys here. 
okay? Now we need to do this one. And this is, like, people get confused because the tusk, we don't sew the tusk together at the beginning. We sew them together now. So this is a place to be careful, and I'll show you when I'm pinning how to be careful about that part. But we're sewing this part here. So up the leg, around the tusk, and up underneath the chin. All right? So this is our last little spot where they're going to come together. This place can be a little bit tricky. Um, and if it ends up being that you don't get this closed quite right, it's fine because you can go back in there and hand stitch it. So let me show you on the elephant what it is that we're stitching. So we're actually going to stitch this seam that comes up the front, around here, around the tusk, over here, and then up under here. Okay? So that's where we're ending. Okay? So that's the funky little... V up at the top. Okay, so if this place, if you don't quite catch that right, it's fine because you can go into there and hand stitch it and no one will ever see it. Okay, that was hard to get to. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing and I'm going to take the leg because it, for me that's the least confusing place, okay, is to get that leg together at the beginning. And I'm going to do that first. Did we have a question in there? We're doing all right? Okay. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and what I want is these tusks to match. So if the tusks don't match, you end up with like a funky little thing. Let me see if these worked out. Oh, these were, oh you could see there's a little bit right here where I caught the seam and it comes out just the tiniest bit. No one will ever notice that unless they're inspecting it because I didn't see it now. Um, let me see this guy. So this one came off just a tiny bit too that it's not perfectly even. Okay, so that's what you'll end up with is like these little blips that are kind of out there. But honestly, that's how hard we have to look is we have to do like this little, you know, surgery look to see if we can find it. Don't All right. Like in the mouth. What was that? Don't look at gift elephant in the mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't look them in the mouth. Don't look too closely. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm taking these. I want these seam edges. That's what I'm trying to get is if I get these edges to match, it'll work out nicely. So I'm getting these two, <clears throat> excuse me, to line up and then I'm going to pin it. Okay. So what I want is that if I do that little quilter trick, <clears throat> excuse me, and I stick my pin right into the seam, okay, where I stitched it before and I stiff it straight through, it should come pretty close. So this is just the tiniest bit off which is totally fine. It means that those are gonna catch inside of the seam, which is what I want. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, where I'm gonna fold these back, and I'm gonna get my seams to butt up to each other, and I'm gonna hold it, and I'm gonna pin it. Okay, because I want these two to match each other, all right? And then we're gonna pin along here. And then we're just gonna pin, and we're gonna pin, and pin. All right, this little curve, what I have found is that the smaller the pin that you do, like, so the less you have in here, kind of the better. I mean, there's definitely a point where you have too little in there and it won't hold anything. But you wanna have a bunch hanging out so that it's easy to remove and that it's not holding down areas that you don't wanna hold down, okay? So we're gonna pin a bunch as we come around here. So it's just a ton of pins, but you're really going to need it as we work through. So this is a this seam here is um, is definitely the hardest one to do, but if you take your time with it, it's not it's not bad. It's just you know you need to take your time with it. It's not one that you're going to be able to hurry through, but if you do it right, it's very. Um, very satisfying that it turned out okay so I've got the the trunk is still hanging out here and I'm gonna shove that back up inside if you remember yesterday I poked it out because I was like it's really nice to have a have a trunk out because um, you can see it looks like an elephant but at this point I need it to go back in because this line here is this one here okay so those bees need to match up with each other so that's gonna come right along to here and I'm gonna pin it in place up there. Okay, so B is matching with B. All right, all of those little letters, they really do come in handy. Okay, so with this part, I have, I have better luck if I sew from the foot all the way up and around, which means that on one side you sew 
this side up and one side you'll sew this side up. It gets a little bit funky, um, but we'll work through it and I'll show you the difference between the two. Okay, so let me finish his leg. So his leg needs a little bit less pinning um, than up here. Up here needs a ton of pins because it's curvy, it's small, it's going to be this really kind of finicky little sewing that we're doing up there. And the more pins I have, the better. Because as I take them out, I need it to hold the rest of it all in place for me. Okay. So when I'm working up here, I need to get this all to come together. Okay, and I can sort of feel it with my hands where the seam or where the edge is. Um, it really is, it's kind of blind pinning at this point because there's just so many different seams and directions and <laughs> all of that good stuff. All of that means that you actually have a little bit more room to, to not get it right and it's okay too, okay? So I've got it pinned. I'm gonna stick one more pin right in here because I can see that that's, that's gonna be an area that I really can't see very well what's happening. I'm gonna wanna get it right. So I'm gonna secure it until I get there. So we're gonna sew up here, around, and then up to the B, all right? So let's do that. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my stiletto because I think I'm gonna need it. I'd rather be prepared. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this in there. I put my needle down, okay. I'll stitch forward a little, back stitch. Okay, and I found that if I do that, if I do that stitch forward and then back stitch, it doesn't wanna suck it into the machine quite as badly. So it really is trying to find little workarounds for that. So you can see if you pull back, pull back just a little bit, Hawk. You can see I have a ton of stuff up here that I'm dealing with. Oh, my machine, my machine kept sewing. But I've got a bunch that I'm trying to work around. Okay, so just take your time with it and just try to keep what you're working with flat. Don't worry about the rest of it. The other thing is that you can totally just turn your machine um, speed down. So right over here, so this right here is the speed control, okay? So if I knock this down here, no matter how fast I go, it can't go that fast. So I'll show you how that works. And I found that for me, that's something that sometimes I need to do because I tend to be a, a pedal to the metal kind of girl. So if I do it like that, I can't get out of control. <laughs> it's a great way of you know, keeping things in check. So once I get here, I can see that things are you know, a little crazy in here. So I'm gonna use my stiletto to keep things in place a little, okay? And then I don't wanna stitch over that. So I'm gonna take that out. So now I'm gonna aim, I'm aiming for this. So I'm gonna curve around and hit here. Okay. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and I'm gonna join that stitch line. And what it should do is catch the tusk so that the tusk um, seam allowances are all inside there. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this, and I've got a lot of bulk to get underneath that digital dual feed back there. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna take this pin out, because I don't wanna run over it, and I'm gonna sew around this little tusk. Okay, we're just gonna take our time. So even if I pet, like this is like floored, I can't get it to go very fast which is great and it's exactly what I need. Okay, so what I found is at this point, I'm just gonna stitch real slow. I'm gonna stick this guy in here. Okay, and now I'm gonna do some little fidgeting where I'm gonna take this out. So you can see I needed to take the pin out because it was kind of bulking it up there, making it not smooth. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing and just twist it again. Okay, so you may have to do that a few times. This is one place that I'll definitely, um, I definitely go back and fix it sometimes because that that little pointy corner there at the bottom can be um, can be difficult. Okay, I'm just gonna get my extra pins out of the way. That guy is funky. Okay, so it's gonna slide right over that, so I'm not gonna panic about it. I'm gonna move it now. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm coming up here, that I'm gonna intersect with this seam line and that I'm gonna aim 
toward here. Okay, so I'm just going to come straight up to there. I'm going to do one more stitch. Okay, then I'm going to turn this and I'm going to have to reposition. Okay, and head up this way. Okay, so now what I'm aiming for here is it to intersect. This is why like, we're just gonna move things around until we get there. Okay, so what I'm aiming for it to do is to intersect with this line up here. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of curve it around, move this pin out, and aim it toward there. Okay, this is where if it doesn't look quite right, it's fine, it's under his chin. Um, but we'll figure it out. So then what I need to do is I need to check under here, make sure I caught everything. Okay, looks like it. How's the curve? Not too bad. Okay, take that nice and slow. We'll be all right, I think we'll be fine. So let's pin the other side then too. Okay, that trunk part too is is definitely the part that I have found that the slower I go, the better. Okay, the other thing that when we're done with this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim off all of that black because I won't want it to come through the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this up here. Because I want that to match. I'm gonna pin in here because I want these to match. Okay. So this is where it just takes it takes uh, some time to get it to get it precise. So I like to do this. We're doing this in three different steps. Normally we do this three different days. Normally when we do this, we do it in um, one fell swoop in a class. And I'll suggest that um, if you do them and you do them yourself later, is to really to take the time to do this um, like we are now where you do it in kind of segments. It'll make it easier to tackle. Okay. All right, I'm gonna come around and pin this side a little. Then I'll pin in between more. Okay. So this is when that big box of pins comes in really handy because you're gonna need a lot of them. Okay, and then I'm gonna pin on the other side just a little. Okay, flatten it out. Keep the edges even. Okay. So how are we doing out there? Is everybody? Everybody's great. Everybody's great? Y'all having fun? How many of you have bought your pattern already? If you don't, we have, I'll need to list them at the end too. We have some stores that have the patterns and they have other of her patterns. So if you fall in love with this pattern like I did and then you need to make all the other ones that she's created, um, there are um, a few different stores that we know that are shipping that will happily ship those patterns to you, okay? Because these are great. Ellen just posted that list. Oh, good, thank you. Thank you. So Ellen posted the list of the stores that we know of that um, that have reached out or we've reached out to them to find out if they have the stuff. Um, there's a bunch of them in uh, across the country. So find the one that's closest to you. Show some love. Those uh, quilt shops are out there trying to make the best of this, just like everyone, and kind of need to support them as much as we can. All right. Your local shop will love it if you reach out. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna pin in between. So I can get some of these a little bit flatter. Keep this nice. All right, so now we're gonna do this. So now when I sew it, I'm gonna do it from this side and come up and around. So when I sewed it, last time I sewed it from the outside and up and around, and this time I have I sew it from the inside and up and around, okay? So um, it's just a little bit different. When we do, tomorrow we're gonna do the pads of his feet, and I'm gonna show you a few different ways of doing them, um, because there really do, is a difference on which direction you sew from, and um, we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow, but I found it in all the areas it makes a difference. 
I'm going to try to lift this up so it sits like sort of on the little shelf in front of my machine just because I can feel it starting to get a little heavier with all the fabric and it wants to pull and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so now we're getting up to that funky part. This leg is easy peasy. And then we get up to this corner bit that's a little bit nutty. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to aim from where we're stitching now around this edge that we can't really see and over to here, okay? So I'm just gonna, yeah, just eyeball it here and see what we can make happen, okay? Like I said, this is definitely a point where I have gone back and had to refinagle things sometimes, but most of the time it's caught well enough that it's okay. All right, so now, that's where my seam is for the trunk. So I'm going to turn this so that I can go straight down that side. Okay, I'm just pulling my pins out as I go. Okay, now I can feel, you can see it's getting all bulked up back here. So I just need to let that out again. All right. So now we're going to take this corner nice and slow. do some lifting. So if you've got a, a knee lift, this is a great time to use it. My machine is not is set up so that I'm standing while I'm sewing, so I can't really use the knee lift. But if you have one, this is a great time to use it. Is anybody else panicking when I come near those pins? Because I am. Okay. 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 So now you can see I'm right... Oops all those pins. So if you see, I'm right at the edge of where the white and the pink is. That's where the tusk is coming on, so you can sort of see that. Okay, that's the edge of my tusk seam. So now what I need to do is pivot the, pivot the guy again and sew toward the bee up on its nose. Okay. Okay, so all of this is really it's not quite blind sewing, but it's pretty close. Okay, so I've got my edges together. I'm gonna aim for that, where these come together up here. It's sort of like a Y seam, but it doesn't have to be so picky, which is great. Okay, because it'll all just sort of hide in there. Okay, all right, so let's come over and check this. Okay, oops, I see one little area, because from this side I couldn't see as well, from sewing it from this side. So I'm gonna come back over here and catch that. You can see that got too close to my edge. Okay, come around there. Looks like I caught all of that. Okay, all right, so let me fix that little spot and I'm gonna do it from the other side so that I can see it better now. And I'm gonna lock stitch because I don't want to lose this. Okay. I'm just gonna come back over. And because we're making that seam allowance bigger, it doesn't matter at all that I'm stitching again where I already stitched. So I'm just trying to aim back toward that little line. Yeah. Where I was before. I'm back stitch. That was my I'm going into the tusk. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it really is. Okay. We don't want to close the tusk, that's for sure. Okay. So now I've got it all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and take my little scissors and I'm going to trim off the black because what I have found is that that will show through the other side. Okay. So we don't want it to. Um, and I like having it on there when I'm sewing because it helps me see the edge better. So if you want to, when you're originally cutting it out, you've traced it with the Sharpie, you can cut that off when you're actually cutting it. Um, does that, if that makes sense. Like I cut it out along the line or just to the left of it so I can see the black, but you can totally cut it so that it takes off all of this originally. I just like to have it there. Okay, so when you're working with Cuddle, one of the things that is the perk of it is that I don't have to clip curves most of the time. So on the ears, I clipped that one. And on here, all of this will just shove into the tusk. 
so I'm not going to worry about it. On none of these, you can see the little tusks, I didn't clip any of those curves, okay? They're just shoved out to the end and it totally works, all right? So I'm not going to clip those curves. If you were making this out of cotton, you would have to um, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't turn in there nicely. But it's one of the perks of Cuddle is that you really can leave, most of the curves can just be left and you don't have to trim anything or notches. Yeah, most of that is, is never gonna have to happen. It's just really in little places. Mostly, is that, a, is that a concave? Where I wanted to bend out, which is why we trimmed the one in the ear. Okay, but you'll notice the big one around the whole ear, we didn't trim at all. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim off the black, but I'm not gonna clip any curves. Okay, so I've got that and taken off. Just that little bit. Okay, you could also trim these down further. So if you wanted to trim this to like an eighth of an inch around here, you totally can. Okay, so that's a possibility too if you'd like to. All right, so now we're at a point, I'm gonna turn it inside out. We're gonna turn it because this is what we're doing today. Okay, so now we've got it to this point that it's this crazy, it sort of looks like it could be an elephant. Um, the pads of the feet have to go on. So I'm gonna turn it inside out so we can see it and we can check all the tusks and everything like that. Then we're gonna turn it back inside out and put the feet on tomorrow, okay? So the way that this works is we have the little hole in the back that we did the little, the little stitching, okay? We did the little L's and we're just gonna turn it through that. Okay, its feet are still open. So I'm gonna repeat that, the feet are still open. We're gonna do those tomorrow. We're gonna to talk about how that works, but I wanna see how this is becoming an elephant. You guys can see that at this point, it's pretty darn close. Okay, so one of the things that I have been known to do <laughs> in my elephant making is that I have taken the tusk out, or the, uh, the trunk out. I'm gonna stick my finger in there, push that out, okay? Because he can get out here, is that then you do it like this and you forget about the tusks because you can't see them. The tusks are just perfectly hidden in there. Um, and so I have been known to completely stuff the elephant, sew it shut, and then remember that I sewed tusks on. So <laughs> I have to take it all out and redo it. So those tusks are right in here. See that? It's almost like a little bound buttonhole look right there. You're just going to shove these guys out. Okay, so I have um, this little tool that we have from, it's a clover, I think it's their precision stiletto or something they call it. Um, and I'm just going to go in here to use that to push that out nice and easy okay so don't forget your tusks because like I said it's really easy to not even see it there and it's it's totally in there Ta -da. okay learn from my lessons my mistakes all right, so then we just use this little tool. I found that this guy works really well. A chopstick would probably work just as well um, to push this out, okay? And then we're gonna stuff those guys. We'll stuff the whole thing tomorrow. Um, but for now, this is where you can see our little elephant is at. His cute little tusks, okay? So this is where we're at. We've got all the legs. I'm pull the legs out so you can see it. And then we'll turn this back inside out to do the, the feet, okay? So here he is, he's pretty cute. Pretty cute little guy, okay? Looks a little roadkillish. So he will be cuter tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow we're gonna come back, we'll do the pads of the feet. So that's what these guys are. Um, so I've done them in this, in all of these, I did them the same fabric. So I did them basically self fabric, okay? Let me show you on this guy. This one, I did it with the same fabric that I used for his ears. Okay, and I use the pads of his feet. So you can do it either way, depends on what you wanna do. Um, there's no right or wrong with it. It's just a matter of choice. In the pattern, she tells you to do it um, this fabric. You could do it a different fabric. Um, yeah, whatever you wanna do. So we're gonna do it the same, the same as the outside of it. I have those cut, there's two sizes. So there's a back feet and a front feet. Um, and I will show you a few different ways of sewing those on tomorrow so that you can see what might work best for you. And I'll explain why I do it the way that I do and what works best for me, okay? So thanks for joining us. We're almost there, guys. Um, we're gonna save the pads of the feet for tomorrow. I'm doing that specifically because those are a little finicky. So work on this tonight if you're doing it and then come back tomorrow we'll put those feet on and stuff him and um he'll be great oh i think that might be ellen 
I have to get the get the phone. Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold hold on. Okay, so we have winner winner. That's what we we're looking for. So um so we're choosing three winners. Every day there's a winner. Tomorrow we'll announce what you're getting. I'm going to let you guys um, do some choosing on what you want. So um, make sure to join us tomorrow. We'll be here at the same time, 10 a.m. Pacific, and we will put his little feet on. Today's winner, I lost it already. Today's winner is Nancy Sleppy of Rancho Cord Cordova um, here in California. Yay, you're on my time zone. Um, so come back tomorrow. We'll let you know exactly what you win. If you will, um, you can DM us or you... Um, I'm not sure if Ellen will reach out to you, but you can message us too and send us your shipping address and then we'll be ready to go and we'll ship stuff out to you on Friday, okay? So very exciting. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure that you get your notifications on Facebook so you know when we're live. We also have our I Love Cuddle group. So some of you might be from there. Um, that we have a, um, a page on um, on Facebook that is all about sewing with cuddle so you can show off your creations you can ask questions all of that good stuff Ellen just asked me if there was a tail did somebody ask that on there yeah. yeah there is no tail there is no tail on this guy he sits on his booty so there's no tail and all three of these elephants in your studio right now are four are all the same size 120 percent they're all 120 percent yes we'll talk about stuffing because the stuffing is different we'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow so I stuff them all differently to talk about that so um, yeah they're all the exact same size 120 percent 100 percent you could do 100 percent 120 is easier so there you go all right so join us on Facebook on the I love cuddle group we're also on Instagram and on Pinterest and on YouTube and all of that good things um and uh, yeah and then we'll be back tomorrow morning all right so thanks so much for joining us i appreciate you and i will see you tomorrow morning until then happy sewing